this is lecture number 2 welcome everyone and uh, today we are uh, going to take it forward where we started so in the last class uh, we discussed about uh, uh, different applications of cfd uh, we saw that cfd is used in almost uh, uh, every dimension of our life okay whether it is uh, uh, designing an equipment whether it is related to the healthcare or uh, whether it is related to some luxury some sports like uh, designing an f1 car or let's say you want to design even uh, some sports equipment so there also cfd is used right so we saw applications in mechanical uh, chemical engineering automotive engineering i i mean of course there are many applications which we did not cover in the last class but what we wanted to give you a flavor uh, is that uh, uh, the cfd is used in every sphere of our life okay so uh, today we start uh, with the question that why we need cfd right of course we discuss uh, some aspects of it in the last class okay but it's very important that when we already have very sophisticated tools with which we can perform experiment so uh, do we even need cfd okay or why it is becoming so popular why everyone is uh, using cfd right and uh, what are the basically qualities of cfd uh, uh, which is basically which you cannot get from the which you cannot get from the experiment right so let's compare uh, parameter by parameter between the cfd and experiment okay this is the first and uh, the most important parameter is the cost right so uh, naturally if you want to build a thing uh, uh, you let's say you want to start a lab uh, and you want to see the flow happening on on a cylinder right so you have to basically there are cost involved with the building the lab then purchasing the equipment you might want a laser you might uh, want a tunnel okay uh, you might have very uh, want to get a high speed camera and all those things and then every time you perform the experiment right it is uh, going to cost you uh, um, i mean certain money right compare that to an experiment tool right so let's say you have a validated code okay which which took some effort okay i'm not saying that it did not take effort it may have taken some years or uh, you have might have purchased a commercial developer right so you have put some initial cost okay but after that let's say you want to run the same problem understand what is happening uh, uh, on a flow pass cylinder okay you could uh, simulate it easily without uh, basically incurring a lot of cost compared to what you had in the experiment right so that way it is uh, generally more economic than an experiment okay uh, the second thing is time okay um, the time that you require uh, to simulate a flow uh, using a model typically is uh, much shorter than uh, the time to basically set up the experiment run it capture the data uh, and basically ensure that the experiment has run properly right so it also it uh, basically saves your cost it saves your time okay uh, the third very important factor is the scale right so uh, let's say you are designing an aircraft okay and uh, the aircraft is of a size of a a320 and if you want to basically test it in an experiment uh, uh, in an experimental lab or in a wind tunnel right so you need to design a quite a, a big wind tunnel if you want to basically uh, extract all the flow features related to very small uh, i mean uh, uh, component to the very big component right so you have to basically uh, design a very big wind tunnel where you can uh, capture uh, the flow phenomena in the aircraft okay uh, on the other hand it, it does not matter in cfd uh, what is your scale okay as we will see in the in the next classes is that uh, all that matters so you have a certain design you will put a domain around it okay and uh, as long as you are able to satisfy some of the uh, the dynamical parameters which governs the flow for example the Reynolds number and the Mach number and depending on certain uh, 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 situations you will have different numbers which are basically the uh, the dynamical uh, numbers which uh, governs the flow right so as long as you can satisfy the scale does not matter okay 
In fact, most of the simulations which are performed uh, in the this industry are the non dimensional simulation, right. So, basically, uh, your chord length may be 1 meter uh, or it may be uh, 1 centimeter or it may be hundreds of meters, right. It, it does not matter because ultimately you would be using that chord length to define quantity like your Reynolds number and if you can satisfy that Reynolds number, you can simulate that. And you can appropriately multiply the values that you are getting, the non dimensional values, for example, your coefficient of pressure or the coefficient of lift or coefficient of drag uh, with the dimensional parameter to get the dimensional values, right. So, that is another advantage of CFD. Uh, the fourth advantage is the information, uh, which is very, very crucial, ok. In the experimental data, uh, you cannot resolve as much as you can resolve in your CFD, ok. CFD you can put uh, enormous number of grid points around a body. So, uh, if you are doing a flow past a cylinder, let us take that example because we have been discussing that, right. So, you can make a grid around that, ok, ok and then you can put as many points as you want, ok on this uh, cylinder, ok. So, I mean those who have not done uh, performed C any CFD calculation as of now, do not worry, we will discuss about how to make grids and why the grid is important, but uh, this is uh, let us say kind of O grid that are made in making uh, uh, for the circular cylinder, right. So, you can resolve the, uh, the grid as much as you want, ok, around the body and uh, what is the benefit of resolving the grid? That you can calculate the quantities uh, which depends on the gradient much better. What are the quantities that depends on the gradient? For example, if you want to calculate the vorticity, right. So, for example, in the 2D case, it will be uh, del u by del y minus del v by del x, right. So, something like that, right. So, uh, uh, any swirl in the flow field, uh, rotation in the flow field, uh, let us say you want to calculate the, the wall gradient, right. Let us say you are interested at that uh, what is the skin friction drag on the body, right. So, then uh, the skin friction drag is given by uh, C f ok, you can calculate the skin friction first and then you can calculate the drag. So, C f is basically tau w by half rho u square, right. So, what is tau w here is mu del u by del y at y equal to 0, which is at wall by half rho u square, right. So, this portion that you see on the top uh, mu del u by del y at y equal to 0. Uh, you can uh, uh, you can get this gradient del u by del y. Uh, similarly, you can have heat transfer. Uh, so, you can have Nusselt number which depends on the del T by del y which is basically the temperature gradient, right. So, all these gradients are uh, better calculated in your uh, CFD calculation than the experiment because experiments you have limitations that how close you can go to the wall, ok. You might have to put some probes or you want to uh, might have to put some tracer particles but then you also have to ensure that uh, they are not interfering with the fluid flow, ok. So, that is uh, very, very important because if they are in uh, interfering, then you are not getting the correct dynamics, right. You do not have that problem in CFD. So, uh, so that is uh, another uh, good aspect that you can uh, get great amount of information from a uh, CFD simulation. In fact, uh, in many of the, the standard uh, research labs, you would see that uh, you would have a lab that will be used for performing experiments and then you would have a very good uh, tool to do the CFD simulation of the same and then you match first the CFD with the experiment because that is very, very important that you are able to mat, uh, match the gross parameters at least with the experimental data. But once you have validated your code and the, uh, the results are matching with the experimental data, now you can look at your CFD uh, data set in a great detail. Okay, and now you can analyze uh, the quantities of interest which depends on the gradient. Okay, for example, your uh, skin friction or, uh, or vorticity or all those kind of things. Okay, so there you would uh, uh, the your CFD data set will you will give you a much better picture. Okay, so th that's the fourth point. Uh, the fifth point is repeatability. Okay. Uh, so, the experiment uh, uh, when you perform an experiment an experiment list uh, I am sure you might be knowing that it depends when you are conducting the experiment. What is the temperature of the environment? What is the humidity? Okay, uh, What is the pressure? All these things will matter uh, on the outcome of the experiment, right. 
so whether you are performing during the day, whether you are performing during the night, okay, uh, so you may get slightly different results or sometimes very different results. Those problems are not there in uh, CFD, okay, because uh, you have established your uh, numerical method, uh, you have a code and you have an algorithms, okay, and uh, uh, if you are not changing any parameter, you are going to get the same result uh, from your simulation, okay. Uh, safety is another big concern, right. Uh, uh, so, when, when you are performing experiment, you have to be very, very careful uh, about the safety issues because sometimes it may be very hazardous, okay. Uh, you do not have those issues in CFD because it is always safe because it is happening on your computer, okay. Uh, next is parametric study. Uh, so, that is also quite easy in, in CFD and uh, it is uh, more difficult in experiment uh, just because of the fact that uh, experiments take time and experiments uh, basically are more expensive, right. So, if you want to let us say you have validated your uh, data set with uh, an experimental data and now you want to change certain parameter, let us say you want to increase the Reynolds number, you want to increase the Mach number or some other thing you want to change, you want to increase change the angle of attack you could just uh, tweak the that uh, in your uh, basically boundary condition or whatever your input parameter and you can quickly run the simulation, right. Uh, for experiments, it is uh, not that easy to perform that uh, experimental study. For example, let us say if you are doing flow over an arrow file, okay, and you want to get this CL versus, versus alpha curve, okay, which is something like this, okay, this is your CL versus alpha. Okay, and this is CL naught. Okay, so if you want to do that, uh, let's say you have an error file. Okay, you keep on changing this angle of attack, and you will can get new results. Okay, uh, if you want to do the same thing in experiment, you have to basically uh, always change your uh, uh, error file or the wing that you are doing. Okay, and uh, run the experiment once again, calculate the data set, process it, and it it's it's not that easy to perform so many studies with experiments. Okay. So, that is the parametric studies are not very common uh, with uh, uh, in experiments, okay. Uh, the next is the effect isolation, okay. And this is a very, very important thing, okay. Let us say you, um, let us talk, talk about a supersonic flow, okay. And those who have done uh, flows or compressible uh, uh, guide dynamics, you might know, have heard about the, uh, the shock and bondular interaction, okay. Uh, the socks form they interact with the boundary layer. Okay. Now, uh, let us say you want to find out that how much is the, the boundary layer is affecting the sock, right. Uh, so, what you could do in CFD that you run an inviscid calculation, okay. The socks will form, but there will be no boundary layer, right. So, what you have done, we have isolated the effect of sock from the effect of the boundary layer, okay. It is not a physical system, you cannot have an inviscid system uh, in a practical uh, flow. Right, all flows are quite viscous, and there has to be boundary layer. There has to be viscous effects, right? But for uh, your uh, um, effect isolation, you want to understand the effect of individual parameters, right? You can you could do an ideal system. You can do a simulation of a inviscid system and find out the effect of that uh, system, and that way you can find out uh, whether how much is the uh, the interaction between the shock and the boundary layer. Right. So, this effect isolation which is a very specific thing to CFD where you can simulate an ideal system, you can take out some effect, you can add some effect that can be artificial, but that can uh, give you certain understanding of the flow phenomenon that is happening. Okay. Uh, uh, this we already discussed that uh, experiments are intrusive. Okay. Let us say you want to measure the, the wall flux. Okay, you would uh, if you want to. Uh, I mean, nowadays, of course, you have uh, pressure sensitive pens or temperature sensitive pens that can give you some of the information. Okay, but uh, let us say if you are putting a probe or something, okay, so then it will interfere with the flow itself. Secondly, if the boundary layer is very, very thin, it is very difficult to put or uh, design a probe which is uh, of that order of the size of the boundary layer, uh, even very close to the wall and which is not interfering with the flow itself, right. So, the experiments can be intrusive, okay, because you want to understand the effect and when the, the instrument that you are using to understand the effect is changing the dynamics itself, right. So, then you are effectively not 
understanding uh, certain uh, uh, aspect that you are trying to figure out. Okay, so in that cases, CFD is very very helpful. Okay, and uh, safety uh, we have discussed. Okay, uh, that uh, CFD is always safe. It's a repeat here and experiments it may be hazardous. The feasibility is also very uh, very very important thing in CFD. So let's say you you want to send a rocket to the space. Okay, and you're designing a space shuttle. Okay, you cannot basically uh, run. I mean. 10 experiments to see whether the rocket is able to, I mean you are able to propel it in the sky or not, right. But you can do 10 simulations uh, on your computer and see how the performance of the individual component is, whether you are getting the desired results or not. There are certain um, basically systems which uh, where the temperature rises very, very high. So, even if you are able to do the experiment, you cannot measure it, right, because you cannot design a probe which can uh, sustain that kind of temperature. Right. So, these are all those uh, difficulties are there in the experiments. So, where it is just not feasible to do the experiment or collect an experimental data, but you can uh, perform CFD simulation of those kind of systems. And lastly, uh, very, very important thing uh, where uh, experiments basically uh, are uh, basically um, beat CFD is the reliability. Okay. So, normally typically if you are a good experimentalist, the data that you are getting is treated as a truth model. Okay. In the sense that uh, uh, what is you are saying what is happening or you, are, uh, you can analyze that and you can describe that. Okay. CFD more or less uh, always need to be related with some experimental data before you use it for a new case or new, new study. Right. So, that is very, very important thing that experiments are reliable. Okay. You have more trust on the, uh, the experimental results that you are seeing than uh, basically uh, the CFD and that is why you it is always asked that you show me the, uh, uh, the comparison with the experimental data. Okay. Uh, what is your gate convergence? Is the, uh, uh, the results that you are getting con is consistent or not? So, all these things are desired when you want to present the uh, outcome of a CFD result. So, these are very, very important things. So, uh, if you are uh, doing CFD, you must understand that uh, your code should be able to basically uh, repeat some experimental data before you claim that your code is, uh, before the code can be used for a new experiment. Okay. So, so these are some of the things that we discussed, uh, difference between, uh, not the difference, but uh, uh, the qualities of CFD and experiment. Okay. Now, let us go to some of the basic principles of CFD. I hope I convinced you that uh, for certain flows, CFD is a very, very good choice and we should make use of that. Okay. So, now uh, after that, let us see that uh, uh, what do we mean when we say CFD. Okay. So, the first thing that we need to understand here is that computers do not understand your differential equation. right? So, uh, the governing equations that we have uh, has got certain uh, differential equations. Uh, you can have the temporal term, basically the time dependent term or you can have the spatial term where uh, uh, the gradients depend on the space or the, the spatial gradients, right. So, but your computer is does not understand uh, those symbolic math, okay, the calculus, right. So, what computer understands? It can understand, it can do arithmetic very well, okay. If you, you ask it to do an addition or a subtraction or even multiplication, division. So, those things computer can do uh, very well. So, what we need to do that we need to somehow uh, change our uh, uh, the, the differential equation or a continuous function into a discrete function. So, that we can uh, find out uh, uh, whatever gradients that we want to calculate, right. So, here for example, uh, you have a, a the continuous curve. Okay. And if you want to find out, let us say I am interested that what is the gradient at this point, right. So, if you have a curve going through this, right, let us say you can define this is my f x and this is my x, right. So, if you know that how f x is, uh, you can get this f prime x and you can get it at this given x value, right, if you know the nature of the curve, right. To get the same f prime x here. Okay, what we need to do is that you need to discretize this domain. Okay, it may be a continuous curve, 
but you would now put a certain uh, approximation you will put some points on this curve okay separated by uh, some distance okay and then assign these values uh, in your computer memory okay and then what you could do is that you can use any of the algorithms so that you have might have studied in your uh, math course uh, to get the gradient right so here uh, for example if i want to uh, get this gradient here okay let me just see okay so yeah if you want to get this uh, gradient here so if you want f prime x okay or dfx by dx so what you do you will take this uh, this is f2 f1 right so this is f2 minus f1 by x2 minus x1 right from your very basic uh, uh, calculus right of course you might have read that uh, it is co correct only when limit x2 tends to x1 right then only you will get this correct gradient right so uh, you what you are getting now may be very inaccurate because you are approximating a curve which is this with a straight line right but what you could do is that let us say what uh, you start uh, basically refining the grid and you refine it so much that your grid points are very close to each other right so then you can basically approximate uh, this uh, curve with a straight line okay and then you can calculate the gradient more accurately so that that is uh, the big crux of the cfd when we say that uh, the grids are very very important and grids uh, should be refined enough to calculate the gradient okay so that you can understand from this very simple system that if you want to uh, approximate uh, uh, any curve you have to have grid points very close to each other so that you can calculate the derivatives accurately okay so this is uh, one of the most basic principle that you need to have points uh, sufficiently close that you can basically calculate the derivatives accurately now that uh, discretization can be in the space or it can be in the time okay so uh, in the space uh, so if you have a grid like this okay or if you go to the earlier example so this is your what i'm doing i'm discretizing it okay uh, i'm subdividing my domain into certain parts and then i am naming this let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay then you will have 11 12 and so on and so forth so at every single point i am putting my variable okay so i have the variable of let's say rho u b p and so on and so forth right so at every single point uh, on the grid point you have this variables defined okay so this is called the spatial discretization that in the space you have basically uh, defined the the variables right and uh, these variables will talk to each other based on the uh, the underlying governing equation and your boundary condition okay now this is the grid that you made now let's say uh, this is uh, flow over a cavity okay so what is flow over a cavity okay it's a very very interesting problem and it's a classical benchmark problem that uh, you have walls on three side okay stationary wall okay and okay and you have a top wall which is moving okay and uh, this is called a lid so it's a moving lid here okay because this top wall is moving and all others are wall so what you have is basically because of that a vortex will develop like this and depending on how much the speed of uh, your top lid is you might have additional vertices here okay this will be counter rotating here and here okay and maybe here okay and if you have uh, if you add in case Reynolds number you can have tertiary vertices also here okay so uh, 
uh, this is a very very interesting problem and you might be in, uh, interested that okay what happens let us say you started moving the lead and what happens after t equal to let us say 5 second. Okay, remember this example of the lead driven cavity this is called lead driven cavity because we will be using this example again and again because it is a very simple problem right as you can see that you can make a simple grid like this to solve the problem right. So, let us say I want to see what happens at t equal to 5 second okay, uh, as we will see later in time that you cannot go from 0 second to t second directly uh, in your simulation right you have to obey certain laws so that uh, uh, you are able to simulate it properly. So, your delta t may be let us say uh, 5 millisecond okay, 5 into n is 3 second right. So, what you are doing you are discretizing your your time into certain parts right. So, you will have uh, 0 delta t, 2 delta t so on and so forth right until you go to uh, like 5 seconds. So, th in this case it will be a uh, the thousand time steps right. So, you have to discretize in time also right. So, any equation that you will have if you start with a let us say a linear convection equation del u by del t plus c del u by del x equal to 0. So, you have a temporal term you have to discretize in time you have a spatial term you have to discretize in space right. So, Navier-Stokes equation which is the governing equation of fluid flow has the temporal uh, term as well as the spatial term. Okay, and then you have to discretize the equation also. So, what is in the continuum? Okay, it has to be mapped into an algebraic set of equations. And once you have these equations at every point, you solve these equations together through your time matching scheme. It can be a Runge Kutta, it can be uh, it can be in the Euler method. Okay, there's various uh, various methods to solve it. Okay, so once you do that, you can uh, basically uh, solve this problem. So, this is the second principle that you have to discretize in both uh, space as well as time. Okay. So, with that we will stop here. Okay. What we will do in the next class we will start with the, uh, the steps of CFD where we will see uh, what are the uh, things that we need to do uh, when we say we are uh, performing a CFD simulation. You will see that uh, you have to do pre-processing starting from the geometry cleanup to making a grid to basically setting up a solver, run the simulation and then you do post processing. So, we will discuss about all these things in the next class. Thank you.